Today, I'm going to talk about the seven main fears that women have about stepping onto the path of healing the mother wound. And for each of these seven fears, I'm going to share with you some powerful reframes that can support you on your healing journey. Hi, I'm Bethany Webster. I'm a writer, coach, and speaker, and my work is all about helping women heal the mother wound. If you like what you experience in this video, please do hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you get notified when I make more videos. And also below, let me know in a comment where you're watching from. I'd love to hear from you. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the seven main fears that I have seen from over 10 years of helping women to heal the mother wound as a coach and a teacher on this path. And for each of these seven fears, I'm gonna share with you some powerful truths, reframes that can support you. So the first biggest fear that I have seen over the years is a fear of getting stuck in big emotions. So fear of getting stuck in anger, a fear of getting stuck in grief. This is something that a lot of women tell me is something that holds them back from really opening up the door. This journey of looking at your relationship with your mother, the patterns that originated there and how they might be holding you back. Now, full confresh confession, this was one of a big fear for me as well. One of my biggest fears was I didn't want to have to deal with big emotions like fear and anger and also the complexity of having to navigate my relationship with my mother while I was going through the healing journey. So if you can relate to this fear, you're not alone. It's very common fear to have. It's a normal thing, especially because we're surrounded in a culture that says that looking at your relationship with your mother is a bad idea because you could be looked at as ungrateful, an ungrateful daughter, a bad person. And that leads us to the fear, the second fear, which is the fear about feeling guilt, being a bad daughter by breaking that taboo of not, you know, that taboo of questioning your mother or looking at your mother and your relationship with her for the purpose of healing. So this is normal. These are normal fears to have. The fear of big emotions, the fear of feeling guilty and that you're a bad daughter or you know, a bad person, ungrateful if you look at your relationship with your mother and seek to do something to shift that. So these top two fears that we've covered so far are very much related to the culture, what the ethos of the wider culture tells us, which is a patriarchal culture that <laughs> prefers to keep women's voices smaller and in the background. So I just want to let you know that you're not alone. This is a normal fear to have. And at some point, what I have seen is that most women get to a place where they, they feel those fears, but they no longer have the power to stop them. And something that can make that shift happen is over time, you become more and more able to see that not doing something about this, you know, feeling stuck, seeing the patterns, but not feeling strong enough to do anything about them, that is a kind of suffering. And over time, you're, you can gather the motivation to, you know, it, avoid that suffering by doing something about it. So by getting support, like, you know, I offer many re resources here, like you could read my book or read some blog articles or join my free community. These are ways that you can get started on this path slowly and at a place that a rate, like a pace that works for you. So if you're one of those people that's like thinking about doing this work, you resonate with it, but you haven't fully taken any action, those are, those are some easy ways that you can get started through reading the book. There's some free eBooks. I have a free course on uh, inner child work. I'll put them all below in the, um, the more section of this video so that you can have access to those if you're one of those people. Because another point I want to make is we don't ever really... <laughs> We won't get the permission that we're seeking from, if we come from a dysfunctional family, there's never going to be really a time where someone in our family is going to say, oh yeah, go heal your mother wound, especially someone in our immediate family of origin. So that's something we kind of discover usually organically is that, wow, my family is not doing their work. I, I need to do something about this and I'm probably going to have to be the only one. It might be the case. So there's kind of a piece that we have to make with being a cycle breaker in your family. There are people who are in families who have more than one, maybe a couple siblings or maybe a cousin who, who are doing on a, you know, a path of personal growth and healing. But most of the women I speak to are one of the only people in their families, usually the only one who is starting that journey of healing and cycle breaking. So that's one of the reasons why I 
really encourage people to lean into that identity as a cycle breaker and get support from a community, from people who are already on this path. And that can really support you in, you know, just taking the next step, whatever that is for you on the path of healing the mother wound. All right, so without further ado, let's go to fear number three. The third fear that I see a lot uh, that prevents women from stepping on the path that can hold them back. The third fear is the fear of having to go no contact with your mother. I have seen so many people, you know, legitimately feeling some trepidation about doing the work on healing the mother wound for fear that it would create big changes in your relationship, low contact or potentially no contact. And usually what this fear is actually about is just having to go through a process of experiencing tumult with your mother, whether that's, you know, back and forth, misunderstandings, or having to say, mom, I need to take space from you and the kind of backlash that that may start in your family, whether that's from your father or your siblings or anyone else in your family, flying monkeys coming at you. That is a possibility, you know, and what I say is we can't know at the outset what's going to happen when we start the journey of healing the mother wound. Some of us, and I have seen this many times, women actually can create better relationships with their mothers. They come to a new level of understanding and connection with their mothers ever having done this work. So we, you know, we just can't know right away what's going to happen. We have to trust the process, trust your journey, trust that whatever happens on your healing journey, you're going to be in a better place ultimately, even if you have to encounter difficulty and challenges that might come with having to make changes, like having to go low contact or no contact. The key really is support. And you're going to hear that from me with every one of these fears. But, you know, getting support is just super clear. You know, you don't want to do this alone. It could make, you know, things worse. So, Educating yourself, getting resources and support is key because ultimately the truth is we can't know. And I like to be, you know, completely honest with people that this is not easy. This, this is like hardcore stuff that people don't, people don't generally want to do this work of healing the mother wound because it's hard and it means becoming a cycle breaker. It means confronting patterns that aren't working for you. It's not a walk in the park. Uh, so I'm very upfront with people about that, especially if you come from a you know toxic, dysfunctional family. The fact of the matter is that you've already been dealing with and suffering from toxic dynamics, family conflict, struggles around boundaries, tolerating poor behavior, being put in different roles that your family puts for you, not feeling fully seen or understood, accepting abuse or dysfunction of all kinds. You've already been struggling. So it's kind of like choose your heart. You know, do you want to endure the pain that comes with enduring these patterns? Or do you want to go through the discomfort of, of getting yourself free of them? Because either way, it's challenging. But the way of healing is much less challenging because ultimately it delivers you to a new place of healing and growth and empowerment in your life. So that's that's how I really frame the entire thing is, you know, what kind of hard do you want to go through? You're going to be living the next decades of your life. Why not live them in a place of emancipating yourself, freeing yourself from some of the, you know, toxic patterns from your family of origin? Because being a cycle breaker, while it's not easy, is a really empowering path. It has deeper meaning. And part of the journey of healing the mother wound is creating meaning around the struggle that feels empowering and meaningful and joyful for you. So the cycle breaker identity is about feeling proud of yourself for noticing painful patterns in your family, working to name them, to try to shift the dynamic, you know, and I always advocate for respectful communication and being really prepared and intentional around how you communicate with your family of origin and or your mother. So that is part of your integrity is the whole process is about how do you make your integrity the number one thing? You know, your pursuit of truth and authenticity is a really a North Star on this journey. How can you be true to yourself? And I think that's what a lot of women feel when they are feeling that niggle of wanting to heal and grow and change things in their family, their relationship with their family through the mother wound. It is it's an impulse that's growth. It's full of growth and healing. It's a positive impulse to want to change these things. 
the tricky thing is that our families often say to us, you know, the opposite, which is that what's wrong with you? Why do you want to shift the dynamic? Like, I thought I knew who you were. And now you're changing. And I don't like what I'm seeing. And you're so unhappy now. You're so disgruntled. Like, why are you holding a grudge? You know, dysfunctional family members will perceive, you know, more often than not, they will perceive your change and growth as a threat because what's worked for them, they don't understand why it's no longer working for you. They don't have the perception that you do. So they're going to perceive it in that old default, which is, you know, the status quo of no conflict, you know, and you in whatever role in your family has been painful for you. And often people, especially who are emotionally immature or haven't done any work on themselves, they they can't understand, you know, they won't understand. They're not invested in understanding you. So that's why it can be difficult, but it can also be extremely meaningful for your life to shift painful patterns, to be a cycle breaker, to change the course of things for your own children. If you're a mom yourself, to change the course of things for your children. And that is really meaningful for especially people who are mothers themselves, which I admire so deeply, moms who are committed to breaking the cycles that they went through as daughters for their own children. So let's keep going here. The number four, number four fear is the fear of triggering others around them. So we kind of touched on this already. The fourth fear is the fear of conflict with other people in the family. So cousins, siblings, your father, any other people, step parents, people just getting triggered by your decision to look at these patterns to get on a path of healing, to question the status quo. It could even be friends of yours, you know, uh, people in your friend group who might be triggered by your taking steps to heal in relation with your mother um, and kind of do some inner work. People who haven't done a lot of work on themselves, who are deeply enmeshed in their family system may find it very threatening. And so that's very common. It's something that we do face at some point as cycle breakers, as people healing the mother wound. So again, the, the, the key is to be prepared to know that this is part of the journey and to get some tools and support on how to handle this. Now, the ways I typically, you know, just real quick recommend is to keep this close to your chest in the beginning. You know, if you have a therapist, some maybe closer friends who really understand what you're going through, a community of people, like I have a, a community in my Facebook group, private group that people can discuss, you know, and in my course as well, people where you can talk about this stuff openly and without shame and without having to censor yourself, which you might have to do with other people. So you, this is an act of self-protection. You want to not share freely and widely because people will be triggered and that creates unnecessary kind of drama or energy that you don't want to waste on, you know, mitigating people's traumas and people's uh, triggers. Because ultimately people's triggers about your healing journey are really about them. They're not so much about you, you know, especially people that have a mother wound that haven't done any work around it can be really triggered if you decide, hey, you know, I'm going to start to take a little distance from my mom or I'm starting to work on setting boundaries with my mom. They can be really triggered. Like, why would you do that? Your mom is, you know, you can't, you know, you only have one mom. You only have so much time with her. You know the thing, you know the things people say. So just be lovingly discerning about who you share this stuff with, but know that there are people who get it. There's plenty of women who are walking this path right now who do get it and who can empathize and validate what you're going through. So just be discerning about who you share it with. And another thing is if, you know, and this is something I help women with uh, that I've helped them with in my online course is how to share once you are ready to share with people. And there's a certain method and preparation that you can use that's actually really simple, but it can, it can help you feel empowered in that process of letting people know where, where you're at with that. But you don't have to do it before you're ready. That's something to remember. Like on the healing journey, you are in control of your pace and how you, what, what choices you make and when you make them. So just know that, that the whole journey in itself and how you walk this journey can be really empowering because it's like you're not a child anymore. You are an adult. So you can do things in a way that feels right for you at your pace. You don't have to push or force yourself to do anything before you're ready. So even just the way that you do your healing journey can be empowering, even as much as the content that you learn, the things that you do, it's the how that can actually be very healing as well. 
Okay, so let's go to number five. Number five is the fear of what couldn't come up in your healing journey. So a fear of perhaps unexpected things coming up. So like memories coming up or flashbacks coming up, things that you might not remember. There's a fear. What if I remember something and it's really overwhelming? How am I going to deal with that? And if this is something, especially if you're someone who's gone through severe abuse or trauma, you definitely want to be having therapy regularly with a therapist that you really like and trust. Because if that's a possibility for you, I always, I'm a coach that totally believes in therapy and, and in the process of finding the right therapist. In fact, in my course, I have a whole process, a, a resource on how to find a good therapist for you. And I'll, I'm going to make a video about that as well at some point. But yeah, having the right therapist, a good therapist is, is so key, especially if you've been through trauma or abuse. So I would say the fear of the unknown, you know, the fear of what can come up, your subconscious is not going to give you anything to see before you're ready. Okay. This is something I want you to remember that usually the, the subconscious isn't going to let, let you see a, a memory, maybe in a dream or in a very big trigger until you're ready to see it. So just trust your body, trust your system and, and just get support so that if that were to happen, you've already got support in place. So you are in control of how much support you have and, and also trusting your subconscious to, to release things only when you're ready. And you can even just really take your time as well. As you start to gain more confidence being on the path for a little bit longer, you start to feel, get a muscle memory for it. And you start to feel like, okay, yeah, I can handle this. So the whole process is really slow. Slow is fast. That's what they say in the trauma healing world is, the slower you go, the deeper you go. And it's not about healing quickly. No, because if we try to heal quickly, we're usually skimming over stuff. And that's usually, it's not good. It doesn't really get us anywhere fast. So I say, I really love that phrase, slow is fast. So moving at your own pace, going slowly and feeling the comfort level that you, the confidence that you can develop as you go on each step on the journey. Okay. So the sixth fear is the fear, the general fear of the unknown. Like what's going to happen? You know, this fear of, you know, am I going to have to make big changes in my life? Like what happens if, you know, I have to, I realize that I need to get a divorce or I don't like where I'm living. This is something that does happen on the healing journey for most people is fear that, as you heal, your preferences will change, your desires will change. And that's a good thing. You know, that's a good thing. On the path, usually there is some kind of adjustments that need to be made with a person's per significant other. And you might say, why is that? This is about the mother wound. Why would someone's partner come into the picture? The truth is that when we heal the mother wound, we're, we're healing our attachment blueprint. We're healing our sense of self as it was formed and shaped by our relationship with our mothers. So that begins to uh, it become in flux a bit. We start to feel more free, more empowered. We start to see more things about ourselves, see more possibilities about our lives as well. And so there's often an adjustment period with your significant other because you're the way you see yourself changes, the way you feel changes. I'm not talking about massive change necessarily. It's more just internal. So for example, you might need more space, more solitude in your life. And you're, you just, your partner might be like, oh, hey, I noticing, noticing that you need more space. How are you okay? Like, are we okay? So adjustments like that will happen as you heal and grow. And that's true of any healing path, healing journey. We evolve, we grow, we change. Of course, that's the constant in life. So know that, yes, there will be changes in your relationship with your significant other, or maybe even your relationship with your career. Maybe you want to slow down a little bit, or maybe even pivot to something. I've seen healing the mother wound. Some women, you know, leave corporate and decide they want to do their own thing. They want to have their own business or vice versa. So when you get more in touch with who you are, which is really what healing the mother wound is about is kind of shedding some of the beliefs and patterns we accumulated from our relationship with our mothers that are authentic for us and start to get in touch with what is true for us, we will start to get in touch with what's real and best and right for us. You become more of the authority of your life and what you want. And 
So changes will happen, but know that they're going to be changes for the best. They're going to be for your good because you're going to be in a better place. And you don't have to make any choices before you're ready. Like I said, you're in control of the timing and the, the how and the when and the what. So just trust that you'll cross that bridge when you come to it and you'll have tools and support when you need to make that change. So don't let that hold you back from, you know, being on the path of healing the mother wound. Know that ultimately, like I said, we, there's so many things we can't know at the outset and we can try. One thing we can know is that what we discover will be more empowering and truthful and real for about you and your life and, and what you want and what you want to go for, what's possible. So it's all ultimately positive and yes, changes will happen and you will be able to face them. You will have what it takes, you know, and if you need more time, you know, again, you're in control. You don't have to do anything before you're ready. So I hope this reassures you. The seventh fear that a lot of people face is I'm afraid I'm going to lose. I'm afraid of my friendships changing. I'm afraid that I'll lose friends. I'm afraid I won't be able to find good friends. And this is especially true for women who have friendships that they realize have some dynamics that are similar to the relationship with their mother. So they, a lot of women can be feeling, oh no, I'm like some of these problematic friendships I have very much mimic the dynamic I have with my mother. And while these friendships are painful and problematic, I am still afraid of like losing them because they're comfortable, they're familiar, they're, they've been my norm for so long. Like, am I going to be able to find new friends? Am I going to be able to, and you might also be one of those women who has had negative experiences with with women in terms of colleagues or friends or bosses you know when we have a mother wound we often one of the manifestations can be having negative experiences with our with other women just generally uh, because we had a painful problematic relationship with our mother and this is like a reflection of that so that's a normal fear to have as well you know that fear that fear of being alone a fear of losing friends, a feeling, a fear of, can I make new friends that are on a higher level? And the truth is that, yes, you probably will lose friends. Not all, you're not going to necessarily lose all your friends, but the ones that are in your life because of the mother wound will pass out of your life. And that's a good thing. So remember, these are changes that are that are going to happen more or less, but they're not bad. They're for the best. You know, you, you don't want people in your life that activate your mother wound and perpetuate those painful patterns, right? And it's normal at the same time to be afraid of, you know, loss and change as humans. That's, that's part of the deal. You know, we, we know change is the constant in life, but we also are creatures of habit and we like things to be familiar and comfortable. So have compassion for yourself. You know, this is normal. These are all normal fears to have. And what I will say is for women that I have seen go through this process, some of them had a lot of friends and a lot of them weren't that great in that, in that, in those cases, the one, they usually have less friends, but the friends that they have in their lives are very quality, high quality friends. And they also, women who go through the process of healing the mother wound start to really appreciate their own solitude as well, their own company really treasuring the richness of solitude and the richness of friendships deepens with the people who can and have the capacity for depth and connection and, you know, intimacy in a real way, not just in a, you know, run of the mill kind of friendships, but deep friendships. So as you heal the mother wound, your standards get higher. And this is true for friendships as well as romantic relationships. Your standards will get higher People will pass out of your life and you will attract new people into your life at a higher level. This is usually a very gradual process. It's not something that happens overnight. You will feel the gradual change happen. And one of the things that you can really use support with, and this is something that I su have supported women in my course with this particular piece, is when friends have left your life, but the new friends haven't come in yet. And so there's a place kind of in the middle, a transitional phase where you want to just really, it's almost like a, a refining kind of place where you get deeply in touch with what's important to you, what's really important in friendships. And you might be tempted to settle for lesser friendships or lesser romantic relationships just to fill that void a little bit. And that's kind of normal to go through some of that. But ultimately, if you stay the course, you start to see that 
you are worth the time and effort it takes to wait for the right people to come into your life. And you start to feel worthy of taking it slow and letting people earn your trust rather than just kind of settling for crumbs of friendship or crumbs of romance that isn't really going to fill you in that deeper way. So it's a journey, it's a process, and ultimately everything in your life goes to a higher level. The relationship with yourself, with your body, with you know your life purpose, with your friends, your partner, everything over time gradually comes to a higher level of connection, of depth, you know, being nourished, more authentic, more real. And so the reason why all these changes happen is because as we heal the mother wound, we're not just healing you know, one area of our life, we're, we're kind of healing our whole life because it's all, the mother wound touches all these different areas because it has, our mothers were so pivotal in the formation and the shaping of ourselves, our sense of self, our sense of what's possible for me, who am I, what can I go for, what can I expect of other people, and, you know, am I worth it, you know, those kind of questions became very subconsciously answered through those early relationships, you know, interactions with our mothers. We had a certain level of self that we developed, but it was also accumulated with a lots of junk that wasn't ours. Our mother's beliefs, you know, dynamics with her that caused us to believe certain things come to false conclusions. So in a way, healing the mother wound is like that divine differentiation from our inherited beliefs and patterning to becoming more in touch with our essence, with our true self, who we really are, what we really want, what we're really here to do, and to express that more, you know, in a more authentic, real way that's nourishing to you and to others around you as well. So that's really what the process is about. And so if this inspires you, which I hope it does, know that for each of these fears, have compassion for yourself. We went through seven fears in this video. Every one of them is totally normal and valid. You know, there's nothing wrong with you if you have these fears, very common. And I invite you to have compassion for yourself. It's normal to feel these things. This path is, you know, for many people, a long-term path, has moments of deep discomfort, and it's so worth it. It's so worth it to heal the mother wound. And, you know, as you know, and there's videos here to describe this a little, a little more deeper, but the mother wound is the ways in which we subconsciously self-sabotage or limit ourselves as a way to secure love, safety, and belonging from other people. So we stop, one of the things we do when we heal the mother wound is we stop making our happiness and inner peace contingent upon someone else. And this is really empowering stuff because you start to become your own source of inner peace and love. And that's not saying we don't need other people or we don't want other people or we isolate. No, 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 no. It just means that we put first things first, which is that you become a source of love, unconditional love and peace within yourself and that this reorganizes your life in powerful ways. And this is about mothering that little girl inside of you who, of course, as kids, we, our love and safety was outside of us. It was on our mothers and our fathers as well, but primarily with our mothers for many of us. And so we start to become the mother that we actually needed back then to ourselves. And this helps to fill that mother gap, what we didn't get, and kind of help the inner child come into the safety and joy of the present moment where you know the past is over, the trauma is over, we you're at a place of choice now where as adults we always have choices and options about how we want to show up how we want to be and so we can bring that inner child into that integration of our adult self without all of the baggage that we may have been carrying around from our families of origin and really give ourselves that unlimited permission radical permission to live lives on our own terms and when we do that it's not purely self-focused we start to Kind of our hearts open to a whole new level of compassion for ourselves, for the child that we were. And this compassion can extend to all people, to all of life. So it really breaks our hearts open to a new level of connection and compassion. And yes, that connection and compassion includes having healthy boundaries and feeling your right to be a sovereign separate self and as well feel deep interconnection and interbeing with, with all life as well. So there's a lot there, as you can tell. So if you want to learn more, please do, you know, 
check out my free resources. As I mentioned, they have a couple eBooks. There's a whole blog that has dozens of free articles that you can read. I also have a free email course on how to heal your inner child, really empowering. It's one week over email with, with exercises, mantras, and lessons over the course of a week. So that's below as well. Definitely check that out. And I also have a number of courses. So I will put the link below where you can get my full online course on healing the mother wound if you're ready to go for this. And I also have some other little courses like one about boundaries. And there's you know a number of other courses that you can check out on the inner teen as well. So thank you so much. I hope this was helpful for you. Please let me know below in the comments where you're watching from and if there was any takeaway for you from this video. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for being here. Bye for now.